The biggest criminal trial in the history of the internet is over this morning, and so apparently is Ross Ulbricht's freedom yeah. site. And now he'll spend the rest of his life in prison for it, which is really a shocking outcome of this. I don't think anyone expected such a harsh sentence. Technology magazine. I've never heard of such a long sentence right. for something someone did with a computer, essentially. Oh, and we are in the Jewish Contemporary Art Museum, and relationship to partner is best friend. So, Ross, how did you come to live in San Francisco? Uh, you twisted my arm until I said, ah, fine, I'll come. <laughs> this was an avid outdoorsman, an eagle scout like his father, and displayed an early aptitude for math. Ross earned a full scholarship to the University of Texas at Dallas, studying physics. He graduated in 2006 and then won another full scholarship to Penn State to pursue a master's in material science and engineering. What's little known is that he turned down a plea deal and he went to trial and he was sentenced by a judge to, to life in prison. But despite all of that, some mysteries still remained about the case that the trial didn't answer. Ross moved back to Austin and opened his own used book company, Good Wagon, donating a portion of the proceeds to an inner city youth program and to a prison literacy project. It was at Penn State that Ross began a deep interest in libertarianism, particularly the work of Ludwig von Mises and the Austrian School of Economics. Now, remember, I was in San Francisco at the time, used to kind of crazies calling me up, telling me about the government conspiracies that were going on, so I took this with a grain of salt. But the tipster was pretty insistent. Albrecht wrote, Now my goals have shifted. I want to use economic theory as a means to abolish the use of coercion and aggression amongst mankind. To that end, I am creating an economic simulation to give people a first-hand experience of what it would be like to live in a world without the systemic use of force. For him to say, well, I'm going to you know, put a hit out on someone, it's ludicrous. I could understand it being one of these other DPR workers um, getting all egotistical and crazy and maniacal and, and doing it, um, that I could see. And I looked into it a little further and found that Knob was liquidating hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin every month. I thought it was probably a poorly backstopped undercover operation. But I looked into it a little further and I found that Knob was liquidating this to his own personal accounts. And when I subpoenaed some of those entities, what I found was that Knob with his badge, was telling them to delete all of the transaction history. So now I was getting suspicious, too. Drumroll, please. My new name is Dread Pirate Roberts. You're the Dread Pirate Roberts. Admit it. With pride. The Dread Pirate Roberts was cribbed from the mythical character from the novel and film The Princess Bride, and the choice was no accident. In the original story by William Goldman, the Dread Pirate Roberts was a nom de guerre handed down from user to user and passed along eternally. The man I inherited from was not the real Dread Pirate Roberts either. The real Roberts has been retired 15 years, and I have been Roberts ever since. I shall retire and hand the name over to someone else. Sean Bridges had also been at that proffer session where Curtis had turned over his password and computer and credentials. And that night, Sean Bridges went home using Curtis Green's computer, username, credentials, and password, and drained Silk Road accounts of 21,000 Bitcoin about $150 million today. And he framed it. He framed Curtis Green. And then he stood by the next day where his fellow agents on the task force confronted Green and told, told Green to come clean. And he also stood by knowing that Ross Ulbricht had put a hit out on Curtis Green. In fact, Sean Bridges helped stage those proof of death photos and helped stage the torture and murder of Curtis Green. There was more than one person using the DPR account? Uh, I believe it was yeah, at least two other people, if not three, um, at, at one point. Doesn't matter. That's why they're dredging up this, you know, uh, hit, you know, contract, you know, baloney. But, you know, because of the involvement of the senator and all that other shit, they're going to cook them. And what this meant was that by the time we traced this to Japan and to Mt. Gox, there were no records available for us to go look at. But remember what I told you about the blockchain, that it's immutable 
and it's permanent. So we were able to trace the flow of funds through the blockchain from Mt. Gox to a U.S. financial institution. And where that led was also a surprise. Right back to the Silk Road Task Force, but not to Nob, to a secret service agent on that same task force, a secret service agent by the name of Sean Bridges. But Sean Bridges was no ordinary secret service agent. He was joint duty assigned to the NSA. He was also the federal government's foremost expert in TOR and anonymizing technologies. The data seized from the Silk Road servers included all internal private messages, which revealed that many people collectively ran the site. One vendor with the username Variety Jones was active from the beginning of the Silk Road. Jones gave many of the orders for running the Silk Road, even instructing the systems administrator to create the Dread Pirate Roberts persona. But Ross Ulbricht remained the primary focus of the investigation. So, later that year, we brought charges against both of these agents for embezzlement, extortion, international money laundering, and obstruction of justice. Things really out of a movie. And in fact, if you can believe it, some of the guys in this story had movie deals and book deals. But they won't be appearing in the movie because they're now sitting in federal prison. And the Washington Post says two federal agents are accused of stealing from a criminal website they were investigating. This morning, they face money laundering and wire fraud charges. Chip Reed is in Washington with details from the indictment. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning. In 2012 and 2013, two federal agents were investigating the Silk Road website where users could buy and sell illegal drugs using the web-based currency known as bitcoins. But federal prosecutors now say those two agents were actually benefiting from the very site they were trying to bring down, information that is threatening to undermine one of the Department of Justice's most important cases. It seemed like this bait and switch that the government had accused him in this almost informal way of murder, so that when he was charged with these nonviolent crimes in the end, he would still be seen as a violent criminal. I think that that has really been effective in, in coloring the portrait of Ross Ulbricht. Three weeks before the trial, the issue of the murders for hire suddenly resurfaced. The prosecution announced that due to these allegations, they would not allow Ross's defense to know the identities of their witnesses. The defense responded that using these uncharged crimes in this manner was prejudicial. Carl Force, a drug enforcement agent, and Sean Bridges, a member of the Secret Service, were working undercover to unmask this man, Ross Albrecht. The government suspected the clean-cut 30-year-old was Dread Pirate Roberts, the creator and operator of Silk Road. Get a phone call from Renee. Ross, call me up. I got an opportunity for you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like... Yeah, I'm doing the startup here in San Francisco. Um, I want you to be a part of it. The more I thought about it and the more he um, laid out the pros and cons, uh, uh, the more it all just seemed like cosmic and the right thing to do. So, um, yeah, I bought my ticket and two weeks later I, sh I showed up at his doorstep. <laughs> I set up a surveillance team and they followed Ross Ulbricht to the Glen Park Library. And they noticed that he was running the Silk Road from the Glen Park Library every day in the science fiction section. <laughs> so they had two undercover agents, a man and a woman, stage a lover's quarrel. And it captured Ross Ulbricht's attention, distracted him long enough that another federal agent swooped in, got his computer, and the rest was kind of history. Force and Bridges used fake identities to communicate with Ulbricht. That, federal prosecutors say, was just the start of their deception. It's truly like a, more complicated than any spy thriller I can think of. But they won't be appearing in the movie because they're now sitting in federal prison. But they almost weren't. Why? These guys were the perfect criminals. With 30 years of law enforcement investigative experience behind them, they knew exactly how to cover their tracks. And it was also very cloak and dagger. They knew my team was investigating them and they were still agents the entire time. <laughs> um, I don't know, you got any more questions or should we wrap uh, it up? Yeah, future, future outlook, what are you gonna do over the next five years? Like one sentence. Um, 
I'm gonna. <laughs> One, I'm gonna do a few things. Uh, so one sentence isn't enough, damn it. Um, but I want to. I want to. Pretty sure I want to start a family in the next five years. Nice. Okay. Um, and. Uh, so they were hot on our trail, because they knew we were looking at them. So they would do things like show up after we had questioned a witness and ask what we had asked. They were also able to get unwitting participants like banks, cryptocurrency exchanges, and other entities to destroy evidence. These guys had Justice Department subpoenas they forged, court orders, seizure warrants. They even destroyed evidence in burn bags. During his undercover investigation, Agent Force, a 15-year veteran of the DEA, allegedly created several online personas, including French Maid. In disguise, he allegedly sold Silk Road's founder, Albrecht, information about the government's investigation, offered to kill a Silk Road employee, and then blackmailed Albrecht. He believed that he was kind of as immune from law enforcement as the person he was tracking. His payment was in Bitcoin, which can be traded and exchanged anonymously, or so they thought. If he was using his DEA computer to do these things, that's probably not very smart. Albrecht has already been convicted of running Silk Road and is awaiting sentencing, but his lawyer told us these new charges against the federal agents who are investigating Silk Road are, quote, strong grounds for appeal. And as we know, the DEA and Secret Service were already under the microscope because of alleged misbehavior by other agents. Now they have a new scandal to deal with. Gail? Oh, boy. Thank you, Chip. But the one thing they couldn't escape was the immutable, transparent blockchain. And I'm here to tell you that without it, we never would have caught these guys. In fact, without the blockchain, they would have still been sitting in the federal government today instead of in the federal penitentiary. <laughs> one, I'm going to do a few things. Uh, so one sentence isn't enough, damn it. Um, but I want to, I'm pretty sure I want to start a family in the next five years. Nice, okay. Um, and, uh, and uh, just, yeah, make, make more friends and close people I love. Yeah, I want to focus on uh, being more connected to people. Very good. And uh, 20 years. 20 years. Uh, I want to have had a substantial positive impact on the future of humanity by that time. Do you think you're going to live forever? I think it's a possibility. <laughs> I honestly do. I, I think I might live further in some form by that time. I mean, technology is changing so fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. I'll I'll come there. <laughs> Sweet. Now, eventually, the government discovered that DPR was none other than Ross Ulbricht, who was living in San Francisco and running the Silk Road from San Francisco. But it wasn't enough that they knew that he was Ross Ulbricht. They needed to catch him in the act of running the Silk Road. And the reasons we didn't want Ross Ulbricht to later claim he'd been framed. 